And good morning and welcome to Between the Headlines with Bishop John Gandy. Our scripture for the day is found in the book of 1 Peter chapter number 3, verse number 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. We have a powerful message today for powerful people. This is a one-hour program brought to you every Thursday morning between the hours of 8 and 9 a.m. right here on WEHA 88.7 and 100.3 FM and online at wehavegospel.com. Uh, we shed light on religious topics, public policy, social and cultural issues, news, and current events, all from a Christian perspective, the only program of its kind right here. And I'm here to facilitate this conversation about these very important issues that pertain to you. My producer this morning is Miss Kristen Eason. Good morning, Kristen. Good morning, Bishop. How are you? I am good. Good. How's good. business? Business is good. Kristen has a business, by the way. She has a hauling business. Yeah, moving uh, and hauling and packing. Moving and, and hauling and packing. What's it called, Kristen? Carter's Express. Carter's too. Express. And if people wanted to get in touch with it, not that it's an advertisement, but they wanted to, they wanted to contact <laughs> Carter's you Express. you should so want to get in touch with you, <laughs> you can find us on Facebook, or you can call my cell phone, 609-992-8924. All right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kristen. And to the listening audience of WEHA by radio and online and on Facebook Live viewers also, we say welcome to you. If you want to participate in the conversation, the phone lines open. Simply dial 609-641-8870. And I invite you to go to my Facebook page at Between the Headlines with Bishop John Gandy. And please don't forget to like the page. And also to my uh, my personal page, John Gandy page, John R. Gandy page. Go there, please, and like the page there as well. So we have a powerful message today for a powerful people. So family, get ready for a conversation that's going to be um, inspirational and informative, intimate and honest, provocative and powerful we have sponsors today good morning we have sponsors today our sponsors are the hawks family and want to thank uh, william and elaine hawks for uh, sponsoring our program also beacon hall beacon hall is a catering facility located in egg harbor city new jersey at 243 st louis avenue in egg harbor city turning moments into memories and uh, the phone number there is 609-965-4255 for your next catering event please go to beacon hall also Abundant Life Worship Center Church of 32 Bishop John R. Gandhi Avenue in Egg Harbor City, the church that I pastor. Uh, services there are 10 a.m. every Sunday morning. We would love to have you to uh, visit with us. But I want to thank Abundant Life for the support uh, of this program and all of our ministry endeavors. Wonderful church family. God bless you. Thank you so much. I also want to invite you to visit our new website page at www.abundantlifeofehc.org. And, uh, and we appreciate that. This morning, I've got an exciting program. I've got two guests in, and um, we've kind of changed our arrangement now. Uh, but we have two guests in. Um, one is a uh, representative of the, a national officer, representative of the NAACP. And she'll be coming on with us to talk about uh, the voter registration uh, drive and getting ready for the 2018 uh, elections. Very important. And also, Mr. Uh, Darwin. Uh, Darwin, give me your last name again, Darwin, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't have your card Darwin, in front of me. Darwin, Darwin Cooper. Cooper, yeah, <laughs> yes, Darwin <sir>. Cooper. <laughs> Darwin Cooper, and Darwin Cooper is a, um, uh, is a field representative in the Seth Grossman campaign. Seth Grossman mm -hmm. is a Republican candidate for um, uh, District 2 uh, congressional seat. And Darwin also is running for a council in Vineland, New Jersey. And uh, he's also a uh, supporter, a rather ardent supporter of Donald Trump. Good morning, Darwin. Good morning, How you doing, Bishop. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me on. Uh, I'm glad that you have uh, come on this morning. It's, it's good to have you here. I also want to say congrats on your commemorative. Uh, I see you got the road or highway name after you, <laughs> the, the, the sign. Yeah. So congrats on that. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, so we're gonna get we're gonna get right to it, uh, brother 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 Darwin. Um, first of all, let people know you know a little bit a little about yourself, guys. Thanks for uh, listening this morning. My name's Darwin Cooper. Uh, I'm from Bridgeton, New Jersey, <clears throat> born and raised. But just recently, uh, just moved to uh, Vineland, New Jersey. But I'm a born and raised Bridgeton boy. Um, I have a, a six year old son. Have a, a security company, Precision Security Services and Investigative Services LLC. Um, I'm a political animal. Politics is my life, as you see, um, and an entrepreneur. So I'm out there every day making things happen or trying to make them happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, that's important. It's good to see uh, young folk, particularly mm -hmm. young 
young brothers out there making it happen. Yeah. And I wish you much success in your in your business endeavor, of Thank course. Um, let me just get right to the to, to the question. The, the number one question I want to ask okay. you. <laughs> and I know it's going to be. A, <laughs> I'll probably hear this a lot, Bishop. I'm sure you do. <laughs> Explain okay. to me, and I mean this in all sincerity, okay. right? Explain to me how and uh, you as an African American. Okay. Uh, not just not the Republican or Democrat, personally or, or ideology per mm -hmm. se. But explain to me how <clears throat> you, as an African American, what how, how did you support um, Donald Trump in light of the fact that many of his policies, most people would agree, <clears throat> are um, not necessarily in the best interest of African Americans. Some would say not in the best interest of. Um, middle class working families, mm -hmm. and certainly not in the best interest of the poor and other minority groups. Um, but when it comes to African Americans, particularly African American males, mm -hmm. in light of uh, m much of the of the things that he has said, not just since he's been president or during his campaign, but throughout his his career, his, his public mm -hmm. life, he has seemed to be. Um, some would say racist, okay, and, and yeah. I would certainly say that he has, you know, <clears throat> I, I feel that he has certainly said things and okay. appear to be racist. How do you as an African-American male um, explain to people how you can support Donald Trump? Well, well Bishop, that's a good question. Um, like I said, uh, from the very beginning, I was on the Trump train. Uh, I just feel that he, there's two sides to every story, and majority of the time, I feel that Af minorities not just African Americans, but all minorities don't hear both sides of the story. So, like I said, when when Trump first started running, I I felt that we needed some something new. Like I said, Obama, I, I voted for Obama the first term, second term I didn't, but I felt like we needed something new in Washington D.C. Uh, as it, as it, at, a lot of people probably felt that way as well. At, yes, as in uh, the the we've been you know we've been having the same establishment for years, and I felt nothing has changed. And uh, we have to give the president some credit because the stats are there. You know, uh, uh, what stats are you referring to? We're referring to the uh, which I know we're going to say. You know, it came from the uh, Obama administration, but uh, uh, minorities unemployment rate all time low. Uh, uh, the uh, economy, job wise, is 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 a uh, 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 back up. Um, <clears throat> Is the is, is the economy back up job wise, or is the economy doing well? But it's really doing well for the top one percent. Well, I mean, I'm it's not. Say, it's I'm, not as if there's I'm, this I'm gonna tremendous. Both. I'm going to say both because I have family members who despise Trump, but they worked at some of these jobs that the economy uh, helped them with. These, you know, a lot of jobs from Comcast to uh, some other companies gave out thousand uh, dollar uh, bonuses to their workers. Yeah, so but, I, they so gave, but they gave out. They gave out multiple <laughs> millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars to the one percent. I mean, this is. I, I just don't understand that <laughs> how we're excited about a thousand dollar bonus. Well, I mean, I, I mean, but still, it's, <laughs> hey, every little bit helps. Every little bit helps. And I said, uh, and, and again, the man is facing unprecedented opposition from both sides. Unprecedented in what? In what? In what way? From when he first you said got, unprecedented. Unprecedented from when he first got in. From having his uh, 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 administration of you know the confirmations being, he's still some people that's not confirmed yet. That that you know he so, hasn't put anyone up for confirmation. He's, he's he, <laughs> well, no, th there's still some people that hasn't right. been confirmed yet for the administration. So I'm just saying, like the opposition from both sides. I just think if so, you said it's unprecedented. Um, you, you I think, think that it's, he's. I, you think he's more. Um, he has more I think, opposition I think, than, I think than Obama a, did. I think he has a bull, bull's eye on on, on his back. Yes. You think he has more opposition than, than Obama did? I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna mm. say yes, uh, okay. Bishop. Really, really, that's a serious answer. I'm gonna right. say yes. So, how, uh, so explain to me if you can. And so, uh, you're saying that uh, as a black male, you feel comfortable supporting Trump because you feel like his policies are good for us. I think he's put. I, I think I'm supporting him as a black male because I think the African American community has benefited. From Trump being in office. Okay, in what way? And in what way? And and that's from crime rate going down, from jobs being provided in these uh, 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 high risk. Do you, you have know, statistics to back that up? I, 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 yeah, I, I, I didn't. I'm gonna have to go on the phone and bring them all up. But yes, oh, well, they, during the break you can do that. We, I can't. I will bring. <laughs> he said, "Fisher, sit doing." Yes. Um, 
All right. So let me ask you this question. So, all right. So we'll leave we'll leave that there. Um, the Republican Party, the Republican Party traditionally is mm-hmm. a party of uh, that has a um, has um, espoused or have claimed to be the party of um, morality, okay. uh, economically conservatism. Um, they, but the the truth of the matter is, we have seen more evident this year, in the, this couple of years probably than we've ever seen, mm-hmm. the immorality, the, the absolute hypocrisy of those who claim to be uh, moral, of moral integrity. Mm-hmm. They demean um, people, people who are other, who are not like themselves. Okay. Uh, behind this, this, behind this veneer or this, or this facade of being uh, morally superior. And they elect a president who has demonstrated more immor- immorality than any public figure that I can think of. Uh, they, they have elected him. They support him. Some would say he represents their, particularly when it comes to the uh, evangelical Christians, mm-hmm. would say that he represents their um, their moral ethics or whatever. Um, how does that how, how does that line up? How, how do you how does that all you know fall into play? How, explain to me the Republican now the Republican side, this this party of morality and all of its. Well, support the, for a, the most immoral president that we've ever seen. Well, I, I, I don't, you know, I don't. I'm, I'm a man of myself. I, I support. I'm a GOP member, uh, but I, I'm not. Well, I don't worship a party. But I feel that it wasn't the party. It's us, the people, who elected the president. You're not so, a part of the. You're not a part of the party. I, no, I'm, I'm a part of GOP. Right. So the but people who I, are... I feel that the the, the the you can't put. Um, because a lot of the, uh, which I think that's more the establishment. I think the grassroots, the American people were fed up, and and, and we ourselves uh, elected. Uh, I get that. Trump. But now I'm talking about the Republican Party. The Republican yeah. Party itself is a party that claims to be has claimed to be, mm-hmm. you know, that had the, had the moral high ground, mm-hmm. and yet they elect a president. And it can't you can't step away from this because this is what you you know the party has um has uh, has ran, run on for, mm-hmm. for for decades, right? So now we can't we can't conveniently now say that it's not about the party, it's not about morals, it's something about something else because it's been about the party and morals mm-hmm. for for decades. So, so, so How do you now So it sounds like you're saying the president doesn't have any morals. I'm saying the Republican party is is hypocritical because because the Republican party, those who vote for a, a man who is immoral, it goes against they don't they have very low tolerance for most Republicans would say very low tolerance for people who are unlike themselves. Who, yes. they would, who, they would, who they would consider to be immoral. Which he he, he faced that. You seen that in the uh, in the, in the election? You don't in, see that. In, 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 you don't now. see it in any of the From senators. Mitchell. You don't see it in any of the any of the. Uh, no, no one in Congress is stepping forward and, and challenging him on anything. You don't hear that moral question to his supporters, his core supporters, uh, evangelical question, Christians. Which which should they question? They should question the same thing they question other people's morality about. They question. They 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 would come against um, single mothers. They come against. Um, those who have um, uh, who have uh, other issues and, and mm-hmm. lifestyles they would consider to be immoral. They certainly come against um, you know uh, uh, those who are poor and, and are less fortunate. For they would even apply. They would even they would even uh, suggest that there's something wrong with the with and have been some, for, for for decades or or, or centuries perhaps. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's something wrong with poor people and particularly African Americans because of their because of our inability to overcome some economic challenges which we know is all um, systemic. But they would even suggest that some of that is due to poor morals, families being um, broken up, and all those, all these kinds mm-hmm. of other issues. Yeah, well, single mother homes, single mother, all, all, yeah, all that kind yeah, of thing. Right? All that stuff. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, so Republicans are are basically hypocritical. I don't. I, I'm conf- hypocritical because wh- because you support what, what a per- Trump- because you support a person who is immoral, yet you. I can't. And, and you see, you know, we're agree to uh, agree to disagree. So do you, do you think, think that Trump is think, immoral? I mean, yeah, he he doesn't sugarcoat things. And, and no, is he uh, immoral? Is, I, I, is he is he a man? Would you say that he represents man your morals? With, man with morals. Does he have? Does he when it comes to loving, the, when it comes to loving the country of the United States, I'm gonna say yes. Explain to me how morals <clears> comes. You know, with you know, be, lines up with loving the country. Explain how that goes. You know, you know what, I mean, you know what it, morals are, right? Yeah, morals. Yeah, right. I, when it, it, his morals, I, I, I think he has. I mean, yes, like I said, you're going to wait, wait, wait. You're running, you're running for no, office, Darwin. Yeah, you're running for office. Uh, uh, now you, you're going to tell me that Donald Trump is a man who has high morals. Is that what you're going to say to me? 
maybe not high morals, but we we didn't want to elect the pope for the presidency. You know that that that's that's not a a, a, a position like that. And, and I'm saying he, he he does have morals from a, being a family man, a businessman, running a uh, from morals. a million dollars to a ten billion dollar business. Uh, right. None of us are perfect. You That's, know, I mean, we everybody has okay. morals, but I mean, so let me ask, are, yeah. all right. So, so how about how about when it comes to racism? Donald Trump is, and I, and I know this is, yeah, we're, you're in. We we yeah. we agree to talk about this, right? So, so Donald Trump when it comes to racism, Donald Trump. Now, um, let's see. Um, I don't want to get to Kavanaugh. That could be a long conversation. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, 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 we have. Uh, Donald Trump said we have fine people on both sides when it came to the Charlottesville, uh, Charlottesville, okay. the, the white supremacist um, um, attack on innocent people, protesters, and the the death of one young lady. And Donald Trump says we have good people on both sides. Would you agree that white supremacists are good people? Negative. You disavow it. You have to disavow that uh, that those groups, but. Um, good individuals on both sides so i'm going to say i'm, I'm going to take a guess and maybe say uh not all those individuals on the democrat i mean on, on the antifa the left side and those white supremacist side were involved in violent uh, uh actions that day so that's where i'm i'm, I'm guided that's to factual, where he was that's just talking about factually inaccurate right you, you have, I, I, you have... I don't think every single one was on both sides i don't think every single one were so, out there so you agree with donald trump that, that there are some good white supremacists who were on that that day were out there and there's some and you're, you're making both of those two groups you're comparing white supremacists <laughs> to you had protesters. other basically on the other side antifa or equivalent to uh you got both black supremacists and white supremacists and what, is both, a black, what is a black supremacist i mean so you want i mean you go with the black panthers you want to go that's that's a, that's so a, you're comparing the, the white supremacists with the black panthers no, i'm just saying on both sides i think you had Are you comparing you, you white supremacists have, no, with no, black panthers. Bishop, you said i don't think on both sides you had everybody acting like war marines fighting each Are other you comparing that black panthers with white supremacists do you know what Black we, Panthers are? I know what the Black Panther Party, uh, what it was. We could get into that because both were on. Well, let's you know, get both into it. Labeled, are you comparing? Both were, are you comparing? Both were labeled on FBI watch lists. So, watch lists. So, so was Dr. King. Y- yeah. And so yeah, was I most know. other black leaders and other people who who the FBI targeted mm-hmm. for for <clears throat> reasons that had nothing to do with being right, being being racist. But you have just compared the Black Panther Party with white supremacists. I'm saying every, but I'm going back to our point. You can't paint a paint one group with a broad brush i'm saying i don't think like you said why did trump say it was both it, it was good people on each side because i don't think each everybody that was protesting that day were acting uh in, in a violent matter so that's where uh you know that's my uh reach to where he was coming from with that statement all right so um but you do know what the black panther party represented correct yes and uh what, what's your understanding of the black panther party uh, civil protect uh, a group organized to protect the civil rights of uh, African Americans. Right, mm-hmm. and you're comparing them with white supremacists. I mean, you but you had some <coughs> violent, some really violent uh, things that the the black the black uh, Panther Party did as well. Like, like I said, what that uh, that put them on watch. Like what? I could go. Like you, you can't said, just start break. saying know, things that say- are that are inaccurate, factually inaccurate, and and especially when it comes to these kinds of matters because this is important, right? You cannot say the Black Panther Party was be was on an FBI watch list because they were violent. They were not. They were on an FBI watch list because they were working targeted. in behalf they were targeted mm-hmm. because they were working in in behalf and in the interest of African American oppressed people. And that um you know and we know J. O. Hoover was not yeah. necessarily he was a <clears throat> typical white supremacist, right? So um when you compare these two and I want you to get it right because you're a young brother. Yeah. Right? And I want you to get it right. And to, to go out and say things that are just factually untrue, number one, it, make, it will make you look not good, right? And then also, when it comes to being an African-American male, well, with all the things that we have, that we face, all the challenges we face as African-American males, we can't afford to have one brother out there. Oh, well, yeah, you're from right. From my perspective. But I can get the facts. For, you know, I can, like you said, I'm going to provide those facts for you. Which facts are you going to provide? <laughs> the, uh, just don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, all right. So um, let's see. Um, you know, uh, cause, and I think this is important. It is because you're an African American young young man, and I'm and I'm and I, I'm hoping today that when you leave here, 
<laughs> that you will have another perspective. I know I'm not saying anything you haven't heard. We're not having a good conversation you have not heard. But I'm hoping that because I'm I'm saying it to you in love. Yeah, yeah. you know, and uh, and I know that you love. And I think that, I think that you're that you're honest in your in your um in your thinking about it. But I think that it's it's a little flawed. And, and, and it, needs, it needs to be, you know, just kind of checked. Okay. Let's take a quick break right here. We can get a little intense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then we'll it's come politics, back. yeah. Uh, yeah, well, well, this, I don't, yeah, well, this is more than politics. This is about, yeah. you know, about the good of, uh, of, our, of our community, our nation, and all of our people. Listen to Between the Headlines, Bishop John again. We're going to come back in about two minutes. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Deacon William Hawks, also known as El Presidente, here at Gospel 88.7 FM and 100.3 FM Atlantic City, where we have gospel. And yes, after eight years, we're still spreading the gospel one song at a time. We want to thank God for all of our listeners who continue to pray for us and support us. Oftentimes, I'm walking down the street and someone asks, Deacon Hawks, El Presidente, I want to help. I want to get involved. I want to do my part. And they say, how can I do that? And I say, you know something? You can log on to our website and participate in our 8 for 88.7. That's right, 8 for 88.7. That's where we ask you to get involved and you can support us by just donating $8 a month. How do you do that? You just go to our website, www.wehavegospel.com, press the donate button and just simply support us with $8 a month. It's that simple. Once again, just go to www.wehavegospel.com, click the donate button and follow the instruction. There you go. It's as simple as that. And once again, we thank you from all of us here at Gospel 88.7 FM and 100.3 FM, where we have gospel and where we're spreading the gospel one song at a time. God bless you. We ain't playing with y'all, man. This is kingdom business. We ain't playing with y'all no more, man. It's the Remnant Hip Hop Show with DJ Whirlwind. DJ Whirlwind. Spinning on the ones and twos for two hours. Spinning on the wheels and still for two hours. He got the latest hits in holy hip hop, as well as the underground holy hip hop artists you need to know about. This is DJ Whirlwind. And this is DJ Monty B. And you're checking out the Remnant Hip Hop Radio Show. Every Saturday night from 7 to 9 p.m. The movement takes over. Every Saturday night, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. It's only on WEHA. We have gospel. Yeah, yeah. Why y'all Welcome back to Between the Headlines with Bishop John Gandy. We're here every Thursday morning between the hours of 8 and 9 a.m. So glad you tuned in. Thank our sponsors this morning, Beacon Hall, located at 243 St. Louis Avenue in Egg Harbor City. Uh, turning moments into memories. The number there is 609-965-4255. For your next catering event, please call Beacon Hall. Also to the Hawks Family Businesses, thank you to William and Elaine Hawks for sponsoring the program and to the, uh, fam the Church Abundant Life Worship Center Church family located at 243 Bishop John Organdy Avenue in Egg Harbor City for also sponsoring. We have in a guest this morning, our studio brother, uh, young, a young man that um, I'm, you know, I'm always excited about young brothers who are entrepreneurial, first of all. He's also very much engaged in, in the community and politically, and um, we may not see eye to eye politically, but we certainly <laughs> are um, excited about folk who are engaged and, and formed uh, in any way, in any capacity. But Brother Darwin, I'm also going to give you a chance. You're ready for office in violin. Also, yes. You're also supporting. Uh, 2020 council. Oh, oh 2020. Yeah, 2020 okay. council. Okay, yeah, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So you're getting way out there you're with your campaign. You're getting out there, yeah. With it, <laughs> so, you know, well, not, not no major campaigning, but just here and there, you know. Yeah. So, because it, it's creeping up on you, so it'd be quick. Yeah, We're already yeah. in midterm elections in uh, November, so sure, sure, sure. And you also anything you want to you want to just uh, share with voters about your about your endeavors? I know you're also supporting Seth Grossman. Yeah, I'm a field director for Seth Grossman. Hopefully, we can get everybody uh, out on November six. Even if you're not sub voting uh, Republican or you know Democrat, whatever you, how you vote, but uh, make sure you get out and vote because uh, this midterm election is going to be paramount, and uh, we need everybody to get out yeah. November six. 
Yeah. So November six, we uh, certainly I agree with that, and um, we and I want to you know thank you for coming in, man. Um, you got to come back again. Oh, definitely, Bishop. I and, appreciate. And thank and you for I, having and me. I, I think that I appreciate you for having a, have, for be will, being willing to have a, a very uh, honest um, conversation, direct conversation. I appreciate that. And you got to come back. I think that, I think this kind of dialogue is is it's definitely needed. It's absolutely needed. Yes. Yeah. In this yeah. day and age, we we definitely need it. Hopefully, we can. Uh, you know, we might not agree, but. Yeah, well, we're going to agree with what's all over <laughs> because cause I'm going to do what to you. Yeah, what Trump says shouldn't happen. We're going to flip you. We're going to flip you. But I appreciate you, man. <laughs> all right, Bishop. Thank you. All right, now, you, you, I don't know if you're going to hang out or you're going to leave or whatever. But uh, uh, all right, I can hang. You're yeah, welcome, you're I'm going to hear it. I'm going to hear it. Yeah, outstanding. Hear it. Good, right, good, cool. good, good. So can we? I would like to change for you and to, to switch seats with uh, our next guest this morning. Um, th our next guest is a. Um, I don't. I don't know your office. Again. Okay, well, you go ahead and sit there now since we have, because I have this in. And then you can, you want her over here, you say? Yes. Okay, you can come on, on this side. Um, thank you for allowing us to do musical chairs. <laughs> <laughs> Now I don't have your, I don't have your, your card. Just I need your, your card. <laughs> oh, let me. For your, at least okay. Well, you can go just ahead. just go ahead and introduce yourself okay. to our listeners and happy sure. good morning. Welcome. Yes, good morning. Yeah. I'm so glad to be here in South Jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let folk know who you are. She's a, she's a big shout, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to do do what we do over here. Uh, so good morning. Um, I'm Keila D. Crane. I'm Assistant General Counsel for the NAACP National Headquarters and was just trying to um, fulfill a promise that I made to you, Bishop, earlier yes. this summer that when I came back to do the second round of of um, community engagement with our Atlantic City branch, I would come here in person and mm -hmm. talk to you about some of the issues that we're dealing with. So I'm trying to fulfill that promise. Well, the, well you <laughs> have. my word. You have, and thank yes. you so much for being here. And, and, um, and I am very, very honored to have you today. Thank you so and much. here for a very important reason, of course, we're going to talk about the uh, voter registration drive and all Absolutely. that all that that uh, portends and also mrs melvo is here yeah. now here's a young lady here who she's very very um active locally yes and uh, i think it's my first time actually meeting you in yes. person we have uh, communicated via phone and in our sure. community service events but obviously have not met in person so it's very nice to meet you it's very nice to meet you as yeah. well thank you for thank you for coming and and, and bringing our guest this morning um all right naacp and um, today we're talking about the voter registration drive. You're in town because the Democrats are having a, I believe, because the Democrats are having a convention, and you are a part of that? Well, no. Okay. Um, of course, because the NAACP is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization. Right. So I'm in town because uh, the Atlantic City branch of the NAACP, along with uh, the local Mason uh, chapter, is having an election protection um, community town hall tonight. Um, and Yolanda, I Sure. <laughs> the the specifics on it, but yeah, yes, yeah. we we want to make sure that that all of our community members here in Atlantic City and in the surrounding communities are ready uh, for November sixth and uh, prepared, knowing what they need to look out for any type of voter suppression tactics that may be occurring, um, so that they are empowered and engaged and ready to go vote on yeah. November sixth. Do you think people have forgotten that voting right voting has not always been a right? I think some of us have. Um, you know, of course, we're at least one generation and in some cases two generations away from that time where you had the Selma marches and um, the bombing of the 16th Street Baptist Church that we just uh, remembered mm -hmm. a couple of days ago. It's the 55th year after that terrorist attack happened. Um, and so if we're not doing the due diligence of teaching our children about what um, the 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 roads that we had to go through just to get these fundamental rights secured. We mm -hmm. always had them, but they were not always secured. Mm -hmm. um, then people become a little bit more complacent about uh, exercising their right to vote. So it really is incumbent upon not only the school system teaching history accurately, um, but it's also incumbent upon us to teach our children in our community what all we had to go through to make sure that we um, were able to secure the right to vote. Mm -hmm. So it does happen from time to time. Mm -hmm. But that's why we're so grateful for branches like the Atlantic City branch um, who take time out to make sure that we are um, informed about uh, not only our right to vote but how to secure our right sure and we're going to talk about the uh, event that the Alliance City branch is having in, in, in a minute um, but you know, a, more, a little more about about the idea of uh, elections and voting you know elections are not just about the president right. or, or members of Congress right. it's about judges mm -hmm. it's about 
sheriffs. Right. It's about who, police chiefs, whether they be appointed, who appoint. It's about power and 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 all uh, and all that's formed politically. Yeah. And how how, did, how how difficult is it to? It's difficult, obviously. What what does NAACP think about um, this coming election? How difficult is it going to be to get folk out? Our, Darwin mentioned earlier. Our guest mentioned earlier that this is a very very important uh, election, of course. What do you think? How, how are people going to turn out? They didn't turn out for Hillary. Or they didn't turn out the last presidential election. They were, I guess, not excited about it or whatever. But shouldn't we be excited about getting out to vote? at every election. I absolutely. And that's something that I communicate with my friends on Twitter's hashtag every election matters. Yeah. Um, we have to make sure that we are engaged in every single election, as you said, Bishop, um, from dog catcher all the way up to the president of the United States. We have to make sure that we are empowering um, ourselves to elect those officials who will make decisions about our daily lives. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. At the NAACP, we want to make sure that our community members know that the local and state elections are sometimes even more important than the federal elections. Um, this year, 46 states across the country will elect their governors. New Jersey elected its governor last year, as you are well aware. Um, but they're also electing state representatives and state senators all across the country, local towns, councilmen, and county council persons. Um, those people affect your daily life. Um, we just saw in uh, St. Louis County where they elected a brand new um, district attorney, which will mm. fundamentally shift mm. how people are going to be prosecuted and held accountable in that city. Of course, that um, county is where Michael Brown was killed four years ago. Mm -hmm. And those people who are elected um, can control many different aspects of our lives. Um, the person that signs our birth certificate and the person that signs our death certificate either is elected um, by the community or is appointed by somebody else that is elected. Mm -hmm. And so if we are ceding our power, somebody else is going to control who our elected officials are. So we have to recognize that once you turn 18, you need to empower yourself uh, to not only just cast a vote, but also get educated about who these people are running for office. Mm -hmm. Make sure you know what their policies are. Mm -hmm. And what we say at the NAACP is that voting is not the beginning, um, or it's not the end of a process, it's the beginning of mm -hmm. a process. It's an arc of this civic engagement. So once you cast your ballot, if that person that you want to be elected is elected, or if it's not, or that person is not, that is a beginning of a conversation. Then once they are in office, they must engage with you you mm -hmm. must engage with them they must hear from you mm -hmm. um the policies that are, they are putting forth um the comments that they are making about these policies if you agree they need to hear from you if you don't agree they definitely need to hear from you mm -hmm. um and so it is an arc it's not just a cast your ballot and then you're done and right. for four years right 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 um how, how concerned um is the NAACP about um about uh, the rise of racist violent acts against African Americans and other minorities? We are incredibly concerned, um, not only because of the increase of these racial terrorist attacks, but the lack of urgency that we're seeing from some state officials, and particularly the federal government. Mm -hmm. um, Unfortunately, uh, where you're having uh, church burnings, you have um, schools that are being um, terrorized by either the students or some of the adults in um, the community, as we saw once um, the president was elected in 2016 and then inaugurated, you saw um, anti-Semitism sprayed upon uh, schoolhouses. You saw uh, racial um uh, epithets sprayed painted on uh, the side of schoolhouses. This terrorizes the children, but also terrorizes the community. And we need to have a federal government that will vigorously go after uh, these issues, whether it's coming from the FBI, um, the sentiments coming down from the Justice Department, starting with the Attorney General. And we're not confident, as we stated in our letter, in opposition to Attorney General, or um, then Senator Jeff Sessions, being um, nominated for Attorney General. We're not confident that he's going to visit vigorously uh, defend the civil rights of black people and other people of color in this country then this has come true in the 18 months that he has been in office yeah and yeah in fact he has um under, under jeff sessions many of the protections um that african americans and other citizens um need to have in place have been reversed and i guess we'll begin to see the fruits of it um in the years to come as they are put into play and they are enforced, and we're going to probably see some devastating 
kinds of uh, um, um, re- reactions and, and results from it. Right. We, I mean, we almost we saw it pretty much almost immediately after he um, was sworn into office as uh, attorney general. He reversed the United States position on our um, voter ID lawsuit that we had in Texas. Uh, he has decided to overturn the United States position in the um the A. Philip Randolph case versus Houston that was out of Ohio, which was talking about purging um, the under Attorney General Lynch. They were on the side that the NAACP was on. And then as soon as uh, Attorney General Sessions came into office, he reversed the, NAA, uh, the, he reversed the United States policy on that. So we have seen time and time again over the last 18 months um, taking the side against um civil rights and civil liberties of people of color across this country. Mm-hmm. And of course, um, <clears throat> the NAACP for over 100 years have been um, advocating for the rights of um, African Americans, but not only that, but for working families right. and for poor and for other people who are disenfranchised. Um, <clears throat> so it's not just about, um, for those who, who, would, who would think of the NAACP as a group that is only representing African American interests. If it were, it would nothing be wrong with that. Mm-hmm. But it isn't really. It's, it's about families, working families. It's about poor people. It's about other. It's about people's rights, mm-hmm. and pr- primarily the rights of those who are who are disenfranchised and right. powerless. In challenging in comparison to those who are the powerful and the elite, because they live in a whole different world. Right. Right. So it's important that the NAACP does what it does. Absolutely. I mean, we have people all across the country and on three military installations around the globe. And so everything that affects black people affects the country as a whole. Um, So if you're talking about making sure that people are able to unionize and ensuring um, high quality um, jobs, good paying jobs that are secured. Uh, If you're talking about education, making sure that uh, we have high quality public education that affects not only black people, but all people, particularly poor people to ensure that the type of money and resources come from the state level is being pumped into these local communities so that our children are being um, educated fully and are able to then go get those high quality jobs. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about the right to vote, if everybody has a secure, if black people have a secure right to vote, everyone has a secure right Mm -hmm. to vote. Making sure that there's unfettered access to the ballot box is important for all Americans. Mm -hmm. Um, If you're talking about making sure a high access to high quality health care that doesn't just affect black people affects all people we need to make sure that the um the aca of course um no also known as obamacare um is fully implemented so that everyone has the access to a doctor um a mental health professional a dentist whomever but not only that is that um black people and other uh, people of color are able to um go to medical school and go into some of these rural areas um and become uh, primary care physicians that's a pivotal piece of the aca that is not often talked about mm-hmm. um but it's it's those things that we're advocating for that don't just affect black people, um, it affects all people. And if we can continue, as we have done for almost 110 years, to push that envelope um, in a multicultural, multi-ethnic, multi-religious framework, then we all succeed. Mm-hmm. And so, and of course, so you're here and uh, looking to get folks out to vote. Mm-hmm. Um, and locally, I want to shift gears a little bit and just sure. talk about the local endeavor efforts. And um, Mrs. Melvo is here with you. Yes. She's with the local NAACP Atlantic City chapter. Yes. And um, you can talk about the events that you have coming up, but also just about um, some of the efforts that uh, the local NAACP is putting into voter registration drive and, and why is that important locally and what maybe what are some of the issues that we should be thinking about locally and that sort of thing. Sure. So I'll take a step back. Nationally, the NAACP has a member memorandums of, of understanding mm-hmm. and for maybe as long as it as its existence they've uh, partnered with other civic organizations who share common issues and beliefs on those issues and we at the NAACP here in Atlantic City have partnered with the Prince Hall New Jersey Masons as well as the St. James AME Church why that's important is nationwide the St. the AME churches as well as the Prince Hall Masons have these memorandums of understanding along with other civic organizations such as the Lynx Incorporated, League of Women Voters, that mobilize together to make sure that people are coming out to vote, particularly in November. So it's not just the NAACP here on the ground. We have a lot of different civic organizations. I know the League of Women Voters here in Atlantic City is very uh, 
prominent when it comes to making sure people are, are registered. So particularly with today's event, September 20th from 6 to 8 at St. James AME Church in Atlantic City, we will be hosting Miss Crane coming down from national to be our keynote to discuss what's happening around the country with, with regard to voter suppression and what's happening here locally. Uh, I can say for Atlantic City specifically, over 8,000 people are not registered to vote. And if you're thinking about 39,000 people in that community, that's one in five. And that's 8,000 people who are eligible to vote who are not registered. Absolutely. So we've partnered with uh, the national NAACP. A lot of us on the ground have been trained to find out who those people are get and get them registered. So we are doing targeted registration campaigns as well as pushing information out because this is, like uh, Ms. Crane said, this is the beginning. And it's not just November 6th. It's who, we, who are we sending down to Washington, D.C.? Mm -hmm. We had an incumbent for a long time here in, in New Jersey with our um, House of Representatives seat. He has left, and now we have an open seat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we are a nonpartisan organization, but we have to take a look at what the party, what the particular uh, candidate's issues are. And that's what we're here for, to educate voters on the issues and do those issues a lot aligned with your community and your personal beliefs. And so... October 16th is the deadline to vote here in New Jersey, November 6th is the election, but this is just the beginning, as I said, and September 20th is really just to educate people on why it's important. Mm -hmm. Moving forward, we have elections coming up in 2020, but we also have a census. Why that's important mm -hmm. is the allocation of federal funds, the allocation of school districts, the allocation of what your community looks like in the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. That becomes invisible along the way, but we need to emphasize not just November 6th, but November 6th of 2019, mm -hmm. November 6th of 2020, this does not need to just be a one-day event and everybody mm -hmm. getting out to vote. We need to make sure that Atlantic City is well prepared nationally and locally on what the landscape is going to look like over the next five to ten years. So you've said that you have done some research and you have identified who these 8,000 people are. A couple of questions. First of all, who are they and why <coughs> are they not voting? I think it's misinformation. I think a lot of people think they are registered to vote. And we've tried things as far as having community events where we walk up to people and ask them if they're registered, registered to vote. A lot of times they tell us they are. Um, the reality is people don't want to talk about voting. I, I don't really understand why, but maybe it's their, uh, they don't want to talk about maybe their situation. Maybe they were on probation or parole at one time. And we need to get the information out that, that says if you are no longer on probation or parole, you are eligible to vote. Mm. People don't give us five seconds to even get the information out. Maybe they're embarrassed to talk about the situation. Maybe they're embarrassed to just talk to anybody about the situation. We need to make sure events like tonight, uh, tonight happen to get the information out to somebody who can get it to them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When I've walked up to people who may be inter uh, registered to vote, maybe they've moved over the last five years. There are sometimes people who are registered but no, are no longer registered for whatever, for whatever reason. We're finding out a lot of information just by looking at those lists that um, – People who, in our branch, know people who they thought were registered and are no longer registered. So we're really trying to make a concerted effort to educate and also educate others through those people that we're educating. Mm -hmm. do, do you get the, the, the feeling that people, um, particularly in this climate, are may feel that voting is more important than they may have felt previously because we're in... Like I am, I, I am um, fifty-seven. I think I am. <laughs> right? And uh, and I will tell you, I have never, I never f could have imagined that I would feel, in terms of the climate of the country as an African American, that I would feel the way that I feel about things today. I feel the way I would. I heard my parents talk about their experiences as children in the South. I feel like the environment and the climate has, I can relate to that, and it's, it's shocking. Do you think that people perhaps having, sensing those kinds of, uh, that this climate might be for some people a reason to say, hey, look, you know, voting is more important than I thought. I, we took it for granted because things were seemed to be going in the right direction, and we thought that somebody else was handling things for us, and it was going pretty well, and now things have not are not going the way we thought it would go. What, what, do, what do you think? I will say that it's very important. And the, the reason why that I know that it's important is because I'm part of the inaugural class of the Young Leaders Program of the NAACP. And nationwide, young professionals from the ages of 21 through 35 
are coming across the states, coming across the NAACPs, whether it's the uh, leaders, administrative leaders as far as national, but also amongst each other to really discuss what, what the issues are in their communities. And what I'm finding is that people in Atlantic City are no different than maybe people in the in the Gulf mm -hmm. or maybe California. Mm -hmm. The issues that they're having in their communities are no different. Mm. And they are seeing an uptick around the country. 33 uh, states are represented among 200 people between the ages of 21 through 35 in this program. And it is really daunting. Mm. And the money is going toward educating us, not just about community issues, but about voting. And we're all seeing the same issues. People just are uh, shy about voting. And, and we're really trying to figure out why. Mm -hmm. Here's um, but I, I also believe, uh, to Attorney Melville's point, that um, there has been a rise of engagement um, because of what's been happening over the past two years under this current administration. Um, whether you're speaking about uh, the voting rights issue, if you're talking about what's happening on the southern border, whether you're talking about um, uh, just a whole host of things that this current administration has been doing, uh, it has in, um, invigorated some folks to say that we need to go ahead and make our voices heard, not only on the federal level, but also on the local level, really re-engaging, whether you're talking about actually running for office. You're seeing so many black and brown people running for office um, at record rates across the country. Uh, or if you're just talking about funding um, people who are running for office, same thing. They are doing that at, at laser light speed. And so um, hopefully... Um, if nothing else comes out of this administration, um, it is the fact that we cannot take our votes for granted. Mm -hmm. uh, we cannot take the um, duty it is upon all citizens to really invest in our democracy. If you cede your democracy, then you can't complain mm -hmm. um, when things happen that you may not agree with um, or may think that is ripping at the fabric of our, our, um, of our country. Uh, next year will be 400 years since the first African uh, was stepped foot on to um, this now so-called America. Uh, 1619 is the first recorded time. Um, that a um, stolen African was brought here to the Americas. Uh, in 400 years, we have been able to travel so far um, as uh, African Americans uh, in this country, but we have so much further to go. Um, and if the last 50 years uh, doesn't tell us anything else, it should tell us that the road um, has been paved with blood, sweat, and tears, and we cannot abandon the sacrifices that our forebears um, have um, fought for um, because we just didn't feel like going to vote or feel like participating in our democracy. Mm -hmm. and I think that's important, and it's, it's also important that people understand and not become hypersensitive to just the issues of race and thinking that it's just about race because it really is more than that. It's about race, of course, but it's really about more than that. And I, I say that because if it does, that's what separates us. And it's not about political party affiliation either. Right. Again, that's what kind of separates us. But it is about what is in your best interest. Right. What's in the best interest of, of you as a person, the community, our nation. And um, and, and and I think we, if we think about what's good for the, for the country in, a, in an honest way, we have to conclude that what's what's best for everybody <laughs> is best for everybody, right. and and of course those who are in power um, are not have not we have no reason to to believe that people who are in power. I'm talking about the party. I'm talking about wealthy people, powerful people, have not demonstrated any interest in wanting to share or concede their privilege and their power. Mm -hmm. So the efforts of the NAACP and other uh, groups are just are, are trying to bring a balance to power. No one's trying to overthrow anyone. They're trying to bring a balance and equity to power. And folk who are defending people who don't need your defense, a little bit insane. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I would say so. I, I heard your conversation with Brother Darwin here. And, and we got um, Colleen on, so I'm going to bring him on. In the oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes. President just, Colleen. Yeah. Uh, it's wonderful to uh, engage with you today as well. Um, yes, th those who do not need defense don't need to be defended. Yeah. Um, and we have to be clear about uh, who we are defending and why. Um, your um, 
your positions are yours and whatever you would like to do is fine. Um, however, you have to be clear about who these folks are that you're going to be defending. If you're saying that you want to, we were, you were, I was listening in on your conversation about Charlottesville. Okay. Charlottesville. With Brother Darwin, yeah. Yeah, with Brother Darwin. Yes, yes, yes. Um, in what happened in Charlottesville is no different than what was happening um, in Birmingham, Alabama with um, Sheriff Bull Connor and him sicking dogs on children. Um, and that is a white supremacist regime that um, Bull Connor was doing, which was a white supremacist regime that the Nazis and the Klan, um, led by a former Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan, uh, David Duke, did down in Charlottesville. Um, there are no both sides to that conversation. Um, there is a terrorist group here in the United States that has been here since um, right after the Civil War ended that its sole goal was to put black people back into slavery um, and has continued since around 1867 in certain uh, iterations. The Klan, they are and have always been a terrorist organization and they do not need to be defended by anyone. And certainly since 1909, the NAACP has worked its fingers to the bone to rid our country of not only the people who are, are a part of this organization, but the, the entrenched policies um, that have been um, put in place or have been secured by folks either in the Klan or the White Citizens Council or the neo-Nazis or however they are defining themselves. Um, because it's not just about the people, it's the policies that, that they're able to enshrine in all matters of government that is really the problem. Mm. Um, that we're dealing with in this country. And Kaleem's on. I want to bring him on. But before we do, you, you mentioned Darwin. So I'm going to let Darwin yes. jump in and yes. just and, and comment. And then Kaleem's going to come on next. Hang on. Right, hang in there, Kaleem. Yes. Well, yeah, I, I want to comment because, you know, when she said about the uh, same as the, it's equivalent to the police officers uh, doing those things. That, I mean, this this guy, that the Charlottesville incident was some lone guy who drove, you know, it's wrong, who drove his vehicle. And so I, I, I think we constantly paint the picture with a broad brush when we when we shouldn't uh, jump to conclusions so fast. Well, that was the second day. The mm -hmm. first day, it was a whole bunch of uh, Nazis and uh, Klan's people that were bringing tiki torches and um, walking around at and night. Just like the night riders used to do all across the South mm -hmm. that, would dry, that would ride horses or walk down the streets, um, particularly in black neighborhoods, trying to terrorize those black people if they were trying to go out and vote. They were trying to register people to vote. They were trying to be active in their communities. It's really no different. Mm -hmm. And they were doing that to saying Jews would not replace us or you will not replace us or saying things that were anti-black um, in in that community to uplift not just in Charlottesville because of course you have to realize that this this was um, to counteract folks wanting to take down Confederate monuments um, and you also have to realize what Charlottesville is. Yeah. Charlottesville is a home of Thomas Jefferson right so it, it, it's not just about the man who drove a car and killed a woman uh, because they wanted to protest it's the Nazis. It's the Nazis themselves um, and the Klansmen themselves that came down there and thought that they could defend um, the the Confederate statutes um, that that we should take down all across this country. And you do understand those okay. symbols, those sim what, okay. symbolically what the, they were, they're terrorists. That's what they did to um, to, to, to African Americans Again, hundred years ago. It was to terrorize. So they were not some innocent protesters walking around meaning no harm. Again, I disavow. It is wrong. Some stuff what they said not on, just both, wrong on, is on, evil. on both sides. I'm not going to both sides. No, no, no. I'm telling you, but no, I'm not going to go with but, that. But listen, both sides have. You know, so it's the United States. Brother, both let me have say this, something. Both have let me the right say to protest. I mean, it's a different than protesting and being a terrorist. Okay, there, you, you don't have the right to be a terrorist, particularly when the country fights against terrorism of other sorts or terrorists of other sorts. So we're not going to be here defending okay. white supremacists as, as if they are some innocent protesters. Uh, yeah, definitely. They're terrorists. Definitely not. Okay? And that's what was going yeah. down. That was, was happening in Charlotte. We're not going to make it appear as if there were good people on both sides. The, it, terrorism and hatred Both is sides evil. agitated each other. Terrorism I mean, is, it, it evil. is evil. Hatred it, is evil. It is, it is You're evil. going to defend hatred I'm and terrorism? I'm not defending hatred. You're going to equate it with protesters? 
You going to equate? Are you making the two of them to be the same? We all saw the same stuff. Everything that was going on on TV. We could have seen the same thing. Everything that was going on on TV. We didn't see the. We didn't say the same thing because you're saying that they were they were both the same and they were both they were good people on both sides. That is insulting. That's offensive. That's offensive. And you need to really understand that. That's offensive because terrorists, our people, were terrorized and continue to be terrorized. And for for a young brother like you to say to us, to say to people who are listening, that those people were somehow good. I didn't say all of them. None of them. To equate them with good. To equate what they were doing with good good and not not simply say it was evil. It is uh, is, is indefensible. And so don't defend it. Just say that it's evil. I'm telling you, both, there was... Agitators on both sides. We're, not talking, about, we're talking about we're talking about and, terrorism and terrorists and hatred and evil and criminality. Not the same as agitation. Don't make those things be the same. I don't know. The difference of being an agitator and being a person who is a terrorist. They're not the same thing. Okay. But they still they're not the same wrong, thing. It's wrong and evil, but they're they not still the have same the, thing. Both sides, because both sides are both are both anti uh, far left, far so they're right. They're both, both terrorists. Far, far left. Were they both terrorists? The Antifa group that was there, they're on a terrorist list as well. So no, both I sides asked you were they both terrorists. Both, both groups? Yes. Kaleem, hey, hey, brother Kaleem, how you doing, man? Yeah, Bishop, good morning. Good morning. Uh, let me just say very quickly, uh, Bishop, I am super excited about tonight, and I wanted to thank you uh, for allowing us to have a forum to let people know to come to St. James tonight uh, to hear uh, our dynamic speaker, uh, Sister Crane. Uh, talk about the importance of voting and getting people motivated and involved. I heard uh, President Obama the other day, he uh, was responding to some people when he talked about President Trump and the people started booing. He said, don't boo, vote. He said, that's the, uh, uh, the answer to our problems, civic engagement and voting. And I just wanted to say a public thank you to Attorney Melville for all her work and helping uh, the NACP organize and reach out to people and helping us form a relationship with the Masons of New Jersey who are doing heroic work across the state uh, to help uh, mobilize people. It's very, very important uh, that we reach out to people one-on-one, and that's what tonight is an example of what the NACP wants to do to reach people. Uh, That's why we're going to have a live remote on WEHA tonight for people who can't come to St. James so they can hear what we're doing. But for those people who can come, attend tonight's program, uh, I'm encouraging them, imploring them uh, to come out. And I think it's ironic, uh, I think, Bishop, you and I had talked about this, the people in our society who have the least need for elected representation put the most in the process. The billionaires and the multimillionaires are spending untold numbers of dollars to affect the electoral process. Uh, they have economic power. They're going to succeed and survive no matter who's in office. But the people who are most affected by these policies and programs uh, that elected officials enact, they're the ones, unfortunately, who are the least involved. And that really should be inverted. Uh, the people who need government the most should be the most involved. And that's what the NACP wants to drive home. Get involved. If you're not registered to vote, get registered. If, as Attorney Melville say, you feel um, shy when someone comes up to you, we can mail you a voter uh, registration form. Uh, We can leave it at your church or your house of worship or your job uh, so that you uh, can uh, pick it up anonymously. There's all kinds of ways, but we have to improve our situation. So we hope people come out tonight. I am so uh, excited and thankful for Attorney Crane to come down again. She really excited people the last time she was here, and we uh, know she'll do it again. And, uh, again, Bishop, thank you so much for having the, the platform. You give people a, a voice and a form to speak out. It's only about 48 days before the midterm election. And uh, even people who support President Trump uh, that I have talked to uh, have agreed that in many, many instances he's went too far. His language is is, uh, controversial and degrading. Uh, His uh, actions are unprecedented. And uh, I think we need to have some balance uh, in our federal government 
And the, the way to do that is people get involved. And ACP doesn't endorse candidates, but we do endorse positions. And when people take positions against affirmative action, against diversity, against equality, against social justice and civil rights, uh, then NACP has to speak out, and we do. Uh, we say that we uh, agree with what you said, Bishop. When America does better, everybody does better. And for America to do better, everybody has to do better. Right. So, uh, again, encourage people to come out tonight at, Sec- at St. James. We're going to have a... a a delicious uh, food catered by Kelsey's restaurant, so you don't have to worry about if you miss your dinner or your mid snack. Or you can come and have mental food and physical food uh, tonight. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, sir. All right, thank you for calling in. Uh, all right, thank you, attorneys, attorneys <laughs> Melville and Crane. Thank you so much for coming out t- today. And uh, um, Attorney Melville, thank you for coming. Where are you from, by the way? Where's your home? Uh, my home is Ann Arbor, Michigan, but I'm based out of Baltimore. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for coming in today. And, uh, thank you so much, Bishop. Hopefully, Bishop. next time you're in town, you'll come by again. Yes. As long as you will have me, I will be here. Yeah, oh, the door is always open. The mic's always on. <laughs> thank you so much, Bishop. God bless you. Thank bless you. you. And uh, Sister Melville, thank you so much also for making this happen on today. Thank you for having me. And uh, we look forward to just continuing to educate other, other people about civil rights. Absolutely. And yeah. and my good friend, Brother Darwin, my, my new friend. Yeah. <laughs> and Brother Darwin, yeah, I, I like Brother Darwin because he is a, he's, he's, he's a fighter and he, he likes to get to the rough and tumble. So in our, in, our intense yeah. <laughs> <laughs> discussion <laughs> will continue to it's be this way. It's just passion. It's passion. Oh, It'll yeah. continue to be this way until... Uh, I get you on the right day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but thank you for being here. We appreciate, appreciate all of you today. And thank you, listeners, for being there today. And we'll be back on next week, same time. God bless. Have a great day. W-E-H-A. It's more, more than music. It's ministry. W-E-H-A. Port Republic, Atlantic City. And now on FM Translator 100.3. W262CF. Atlantic City. Pleasantville. You are cordially invited to attend My Vote is Power, a program to increase voter turnout and awareness for the November 6th election, Thursday, September 20th, 2018, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at St. James AME Church, New York Avenue and Arctic Avenue in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Refreshments will be served. Sponsored by Atlantic City Branch NAACP, Kaleem Shabazz, President, Prince Hall Grand Lodge of New Jersey, Most Worshipful Master, Tassan Rasul, Dawood, Grandmaster.